I'll be doing a little bit of an introduction um, on our guest, Kevin Guano. Uh, he'll be reviewing the U Windsor Accelerated Project Management uh, certi Certificate, and uh, we'll pause for a little bit of Q&A, then uh, he'll move on to the PMP exam prep course we offer for those that are interested, and then another Q&A at the end. So lots of opportunity to ask questions. And with that said, so both the Accelerated Project Management uh, Certificate and the PMP exam prep course are delivered in partnership with Procept Associates Limited, uh, registered education provider licensed by Project Management Institute. So today we have Kevin Iguano, the president of Procept, to talk about uh, these programs with over 25 years of experience managing complex systems integration and software development projects. Kevin is known in the industry for his innovative approaches to solving common project management plot problems. Uh, he is P PMI certified project management professional and his competency is certified by IBM as a certified executive project manager and by the International Project Management Association IPMA as a senior project manager IPMA level B. And we're happy to have him as one of our trainers uh, in the U Windsor uh, project management program as well. Kevin also is the author of over 30 books, audiobooks, and DVDs, in addition to a number of articles published in magazines and journals worldwide, among many other accreditations and accolades. Uh, Kevin, you have quite the career and are excited to hear um, some more about your insights. So with that said, I'll let you take it from here. Or I'm going to stop sharing and I will let you share here. Great. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, wow, that was quite the introduction. <laughs> you set the bar very high. <laughs> I hope people's expectations are met. Uh, so as, as Sue said, my name is Kevin Aguano, and uh, I've been in the project management world for over 30 years, and I've worked in all kinds of industries, everything from systems integration and IT projects to construction projects, business transformation, mergers and acquisitions, marketing campaign development, um, policy development with government. I've worked on all kinds of projects in all kinds of industries. So take advantage of that. And use me as a resource to pick my brains, um, you know, in the Q&A section um, as part of this presentation. So I'm here today to talk about what credentials are available to you as a project manager in Canada and which ones are, um, you know, are interesting to employers and, and where does the University of Windsor program fit within that? Okay, switching over to my slides here. Uh, you've heard all about me. Um, as I said, I've got both traditional project management training as well as all this agile project management training. So I sort of live in both worlds and uh, I can certainly answer any questions you have on those topics. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about project management certification first, right? You saw from that opening screen, there's all kinds of certifications out there. The problem is different certifications are looking at different aspects of project management. You're not always comparing apples and apples when you look at them. The Project Management Institute, as Sue mentioned earlier, is one of the standard setting bodies for project management. They're an American-based organization that has now expanded internationally, and they are one of the major players in the project management space in terms of setting project management standards for competence, performance, um, etc. And they do certifications. And PMI has something they created called the Talent Triangle, which you should see on your screen here. And what they're saying is to be a good, competent project manager, you need skills and experience in three different areas. You need technical skills, technical project management skills, which includes things like estimating and scheduling and forecasting and, and, and you know, all of that PM stuff, right? Working around the pro building the project plan, assessing and managing risks. You need project management specific skills, but you also need general strategic and business management skills, um, critical thinking, negotiation skills. You need to be able to understand a little bit about contracts and contract law in your area, a little bit about the industry that you work within. It may have regulations and, and certain standards that have to be followed, et cetera. So that's the strategic and business management skills. And then you need soft skills, leadership, creative thinking, presentation skills, being persuasive, um, emotional self-control. There's certain kinds of leadership skills that you need as well to function effectively in, in the work environment. So they're saying people need skills across all three areas. In fact, in a study done by PMI, 
called Pulse of the Profession, uh, and you can get it for free on PMI's website. Look in publications and you'll find it. Um, what's really interesting is those leadership skills are the vast majority of what a senior, seasoned, experienced, successful project manager needs. Those technical skills where most courses focus, what most, most courses focus on, represent only about 10% of what's needed to succeed in project management. Yeah, we also need some business knowledge, but 80% is focused on these soft skills, the leadership skills, dealing with people, because projects happen through the actions of people. And we need to work with teams. So there's team building and, and motivation and all kinds of stuff that's wrapped into that as well. Now, University of Windsor's accelerated PM certificate program is designed to look at that holistic view, to look at the talent triangle. It's a nine day program, nine full days of training. Now, if we could be in person, they would be full day in class. But, you know, we're online because of COVID. And even though we're still kind of in a this sort of almost post COVID world, but COVID's still around, people are a little bit hesitant about going in person. So there's still a lot of online training going on. So what we're doing with the online training is we're taking that full day and we're breaking it into two half day sessions that are online. So when I say something's nine days, that would be 18 half day online sessions or nine days in person. And the way we structure these half day sessions, nobody wants to sit in front of a screen for half a day. You're, you know, your, your eyes are gonna go crazy. You're gonna get a headache. That's not great if you're just staring at a screen for three and a half hours. So what we do is we do one hour of highly interactive e-learning, lots of case studies and group work and questions and answers and lots of discussions. And there's you know things that you do to demonstrate, to practice, to use the skills you're being taught, to apply it in case study scenarios. Right? So there's an, an hour of interactive e-learning and then there's a break, wait, 10, 15 minutes. And we ask you to get up and walk away from your computer, not to stare at the screen, not to do emails during the break, you're trying to give your eyes and your brain a bit of a rest. So get up, walk around, go get a glass of water, go throw a ball for your dog, come on back to the computer after the break, refreshed, then another hour of interactive e-learning, then another break, then the final hour of interactive e-learning, and then that's it for the day. You know, the second half of that day might be tomorrow or a few days later, right? We, we may do them on consecutive days, but you know, research shows that after about half a day, even with the breaks, your, your brain's going to get fried if you keep going. So we stop, right? We give you a, a bit of a break and then you come back for the rest. We don't have that problem when you're physically in person in a classroom. Part of the reason is because your eyes are focusing all at one distance, one focal length for the entire three and a half hours. And if you're just staring at a screen, but in a classroom, you're looking at your book, you're looking at a, another person asking a question at the next table over from you. You're looking at the instructor at the front of the room. Your eyes are constantly refocusing at different distances. You don't get that same eye fatigue and eye strain, et cetera. So we try to package it this way to help with that um, for our e-learning uh, sessions. So we have these nine days. How is this structured? Well, there's these three different levels. Level one, we're calling it, is the foundations, the fundamental stuff you need to know about project management. And we call that course Project Management Fundamentals, or Essentials, sorry, PM Essentials. So this is three full days or six half days of online training covering the basic stuff you need to know about what is a project, how does it relate to existing business operations, how are projects and operations similar and different. We talk about the basics of working with stakeholders to understand the intent of the project, to, to form the project, it, it, the vision for the project, building a plan, estimating, right? We talk about things like planning and critical path and budgeting and all of that. Then execution, monitoring, control. How do you run the project to try and keep it to stick to the plan? And then we have a little bit at the end about wrapping up the project, how to wrap up and close out a project. So it, it covers the full project life cycle, but at a fairly high level, enough to give you an understanding of what project management is, how it should work, some of the tools and techniques. Uh, and that's the project management essentials course. I'm going to come back to that one a little bit later, because after this course, you can actually you're eligible if you wish to go get a professional certification or professional designation. This course is designed to meet that, that minimum level of knowledge that you need to successfully pass that qualification exam. And some people who've taken that, uh, have passed that exam, have actually gotten jobs because of that certification. So if you're looking for work, 
this is a great way to start. The PM Essentials course starts you down the project management journey and you can get a professional designation right off the bat at the end of it and keep going through the program to work towards more advanced designations. Once you've completed the PM Essentials program, there's five more days of training that open up to you. So um, these are five mandatory courses that are part of the certificate program. The first one is an introduction to agile project management. You're going to hear a lot about agile and agility out there in the work world these days. Uh, agile's been uh, um, around for 20 plus 30, maybe almost 30 years now, um, although we've only been calling it agile for about 22 of those years. However, um, agile is taking more and more of a presence now in our standard corporate work environments. It's no longer a niche thing that's used only in IT or something like that. It's spreading throughout the work work world. It's used heavily in construction and in, in research and development and lots of organizational change projects, mergers and acquisitions projects. Lots of different industries now are using agile techniques. And it's imperative as a project manager that you learn these as well, at least some of them, because you're going to encounter them in the work world and they're great tools to deal with projects that are facing high levels of change, uncertainty, ambiguity, which kind of characterizes our work world these days. The next course it's in that is communications and stakeholder management. Now, this course is really important. It's about people. It's about understanding people. What are their motivations? What are, what's the, the bias or the spin or what's their hidden agendas? Let's try and figure that out. And then how do we figure out how we can plan to communicate with them better to give them the information they need in the format they need and with the timing that they need to keep them happy. And not everybody, because not all stakeholders are equal. Some are more important than others. So how do you distinguish them and figure out who is more important than others, right? In terms of um, structuring your project to meet their, their needs. So that's that uh, second mandatory course, communications and stakeholder management. This is level two. Level th uh, the next course is scheduling and cost management. So this one, we go even deeper into these topics. PM Essentials, that, that fundamental beginner course you took, at a high level talked about scheduling and cost management, right? Out of that course, we spent some time on it. Now we're gonna dive a lot deeper into the, the, the complexities of scheduling and, and dealing with parallel work streams and what happens if um, change happens to your project schedule and how does schedule changes affect cost and how do we track our budget and use that to to update forecasting. So we go much deeper into that, into that third course, scheduling and cost management. Now, no matter how good your schedule is or your budget is, you know, things happen. The old Murphy's Law, right? Things will go wrong somehow, somewhere, something will go wrong and surprise you. So that brings up the fourth course, which is managing project risk. Risk management is about dealing with uncertainty and preparing for surprises. Now, some surprises can be good, we call those opportunities, and some surprises can be bad, we call those threats, right? So it's about how do we look at these opportunities and threats that could potentially occur and put ourselves in a position to either take advantage of an opportunity or avoid or reduce the impact of a threat, of something bad happening. And that's that managing project risk. So it's about identifying these risks, prioritizing them, uh, uh, coming up with risk response plans or risk response strategies, Figuring out is the risk response worth it, right? Is it, you have a plan to avoid a risk, but if the cost of avoiding the risk is worse than the risk itself, maybe you don't want to do that, right? So we have to look at that and look at feasibility. There's a whole bunch of interesting stuff in that course. And then the fifth mandatory course in the second tier is managing project-driven change. Projects are about changing the as-is. Right. If something if you're in a factory building widgets and you're building the same thing over and over and over again, that's called operations. And, and the, the techniques to manage that are operations management. And that's a whole separate area of knowledge. But when we want to disrupt that that current operation, that becomes a project to change the operation to a new state is a project itself. So this could be, you know, plant uh, retooling. This could be. Um, changing, reorging an organization. Everybody reports to new people and figuring that all out. It become coming up with new products or services, um, developing new policies and procedures. Anytime we're creating some kind of change to a, a, an existing organization or product or state, 
that's really defining what is a project. So projects are about making changes. And if projects are making changes, we want to make sure that we get the results from those changes. In other words, building the new widget, you know, coming up, designing and building a new widget, that, that was a project, that design project of coming up with that first prototype, that was a project. But if nobody ever ends up using this widget, if it never gets sold into the marketplace and never gets bought and used by real people, then maybe the project failed in its goal, right? We don't create projects without having some kind of long-term benefit identified. So managing project-driven change is about how do we make sure that we realize the benefits that we were looking for from this project. So if we came up with a new policy, how do we make sure that policy gets implemented and people actually get the training they need to understand the policy? And what can we do to encourage them to stick to the new policy, right? That's part of that project-driven change. So a little bit about, uh, I guess, organizational change management is another way of looking at it. So that's that managing project-driven change. So those are the, that's the second tier. There's five additional days. So the three-day project management essentials is a prerequisite. And then after that, you got to complete these five courses. Doesn't matter which order you complete them in, but you got to complete these five courses before you move on to the third tier. And the third tier has three options. And this is where we allow you to slightly tailor the program to your specific needs. The first option is a course called Defining and Managing Scope. Scope is what the project is trying to do, right? Not how you do it. That's the planning and, and part. This is the what. So what is it that we're being asked to do? So how do you define the goals of a project? How do you manage changes to the project scope? What do you do in environments of high levels of change? We've got a course specifically designed for that. Um, that course would be a great choice if you're working in projects that build intangible deliverables. Uh, so you're not building something we can we can touch, that we can feel, that I, I can visualize clearly. Like if I'm building a, a parking garage, I can envision what that looks like. I know what parking garages are like. I can imagine how many floors and how many stalls on each floor. You can kind of figure this out in your head. It's easier to get an understanding of what's needed, what's in scope or out of scope. But say I'm my, my goal is to come up with a new vacation planning policy and tool. Well, what does that mean? What 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 is that going to look like? What's included or not? I don't understand. How is this going to work? I don't know yet. There's so much uncertainty because it's an intangible thing that we're building. You don't know what you want till you see it starting to emerge. And then you can understand, will that work for me or not? So because we're working on intangibles, then a, a, a course designed to help me understand how to define those intangibles earlier on would be very helpful. So somebody working in IT or R&D projects, you know, th this defining and managing project scope might be very applicable to them. Another option instead of that is taking a different course called procurement and contract management. This is one that would be very good for people working in the construction industry, people working on where they're working closely with vendors, maybe you're, you are the project manager, maybe there's a couple of people in your organization that are working on the project, but a bunch of them don't work for your organization, they're contractors that you've hired in, um, you're subcontracting out bits of the work, then this procurement and contract management course might be, might be more applicable to you. So it talks about the stages of procurement, what the role of the project manager is in those, um, selecting and managing vendors, a little bit about contract monitoring to check how the contract is doing while the vendor's uh, performing. So that's the procurement and contract management option. And then there's a third option that is more general, more generic. If neither of those first two fit with you, you might want to look at project closeout best practices. This is industry agnostic. It's not specific to any industry, but it's what are the steps that we need to effectively um, get a, agreement from the client that the project is indeed over and what are the steps that you need to do to close out formally the project both from an accounting financial perspective from an HR perspective from a legal perspective etc how can we make sure the project shuts down in an orderly way so that's the structure you take the three days at the beginning those five mandatory courses in the middle and then one of those one day courses at the end that's a total of nine days of training and as I said, all of these are offered online.
um, depending on how COVID goes, uh, you know, in, in the upcoming year, the university may start doing some in-class stuff. There may be in-class options. It depends on how public health guidelines and university policies change. But as of right now, we've scheduled a bunch of online courses um, for the upcoming fall term, for sure. Um, so this is a little bit about those those courses. Now, these courses can enable you to get professional certifications. Um, there's some other courses the university offers that are outside of the Accelerated Project Management Certificate program that you may also be interested in. The first one that was mentioned a little bit earlier by Sue is the PMP Exam Prep. Remember that organization PMI, the Project Management Institute that I talked about earlier, that international standards body uh, for project management? They have a certification called the Project Management Professional or PMP. This is essentially the, the de facto default standard for project management um, in North America. So if you're looking for a job in Canada or the US as a project manager, there are ways of starting in the profession without your PMP, but you're not gonna get any real senior positions in the profession unless you have your PMP. Um, there are, there, that's not, you don't have to have it, um, but you know, 80, 90% of the time, if you look at the job ads, they're all looking for a PMP. So that's, that's almost the minimum threshold you need to get the job. Now, there are some very senior, seasoned, experienced people that don't have their PMP. You know, they were around before the PMP was a thing and got great jobs and worked their way up. But these days, almost every job posting you're going to see for a senior project manager is requiring a PMP. So you might want to put that as a, as a career goal for you to get your PMP because it'll lead to potentially promotions and better jobs. Now, the PMP exam prep course is also offered by Windsor's Continuing Education Department. It's five days of training, which we've broken into 10 half day sessions, and we're running them starting October 5th on Wednesday evenings and Saturdays, sort of late morning, early afternoon. So Wednesday evenings after work, you can come in and you, you go for three and a half hours. And then Saturdays, again, they start, I can't, I can't remember the exact timing. I think it's 10 or 10.30 till like one or some somewhere in that range. So it's late morning into the early afternoon, just over the lunch period, um, each Wednesday and Saturday, uh, over 10, 10 total classes. This will prepare you to sit down and write the PMP exam. A uh, little bit more about the exam coming up. Um, so uh, we'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. So that's the PMP exam. Uh, the next is there's something called the Certified Agile Project Manager exam. Uh, a lot of people need agile credentials. And there is a course called Certified Agile Project Manager available from University of Windsor. Um, right now, there isn't one scheduled for the upcoming term. They're trying to assess interest. So you have the option of uh, entering or getting your name on an interest list. And if they get enough people on the list, they'll run the course. Uh, Certified Agile Project Manager. It's a three day course, so six half day sessions. And um, that would take what was covered in that one day intro to Agile course, but dive even deeper into how do you manage in an agile way? Lots of case studies and examples and exercises to make sure that you uh, uh, you can actually apply some of this knowledge. And at the end of that, you can get the Certified Agile Project Manager designation. So the PMP exam is sort of on traditional project management, <coughs> although there is some agile content. You'll get the letters PMP after your name. And if you complete the Certified Agile Project Manager exam, you get cert.apm after your name. So something you might be interested in. So let's talk about the PMP exam requirements. There's two paths to uh, get to qualifying to write the PMP exam. The first one is if you have a four year university degree and you've got 36 th months or three years of what they here I wrote leading projects, but their version of that is, is kind of fuzzy. What they mean is 36 months of working in projects in, on project teams with doing some project management related activities, which could be spending some time scheduling or estimating or reporting or attending status update meetings or things like that. If you can get 36 months of doing that, plus um, 35 hours of PM training, 
which, by the way, if you take the PMP exam prep course from uh, Windsor Continuing Education, that gives you your 35 hours, then you've met the requirements uh, to write the exam. If you don't have a four year degree, they'll take a high school diploma, but then they want 60 months of experience working in project environments. Uh, so that's a, a little bit longer. It's five years instead of three years. Anyway, once you've met those requirements, then you write the exam. It's four hours long. There's 200 questions. Um, the question formats are changing. This, is, this has changed quite a bit in the last two years. Uh, we highly recommend you take uh, University of Windsor's PMP exam prep course because the course is created by PMI and the instructors are accredited by PMI to deliver that exact course. They always have the latest information on changes to the exam and, and, and the latest uh, restructuring of the exam because there's constant tweaks happening at the PMI level to this exam. So you'll get the latest and greatest if you take this course. Now, the, some of the changes, for example, they've made to the exam, they now broke the questions down over three domains, right? So half of the questions are on project management processes. That's that technical PM stuff on that talent triangle I talked about. Estimating, scheduling, procurement, risk management, all that kind of stuff. 42% of them are about leading and managing people on the project team. And 8% are working in a business context, the business environment, you know, look, deal, understanding a little bit about contracts. We cover some of that in the procurement course. Understanding financials, we cover a little bit of that in the uh, course we have on scheduling and and uh, and cost control. Uh, so we cover some of that stuff uh, in those other courses. Uh, half the questions overall are going to be roughly agile related. So that's why we want you to take that one day intro to agile course as part of your base certificate program. And the questions are all not multiple choice. They used to be. But now we've also added in questions where there's a video or an animation that plays and then they ask you questions about what you saw in that video or animation. So they may give you a demonstration of something happening on the project and ask you to uh, classify it. The next thing is there's drag and drop questions. They may give you a list of steps and they say sort them in the right order or there may be um, items and something they're related to and you have to match them up, connect them, which item goes with the other. That's another type of question. So they have different question types now as well. Uh, some people struggle with multiple choice, so they have different styles of questions to deal with different types of learning. That's the PMP exam. It can now be written from home, um, or you can go to an exam test center, depending on how quiet your home environment is. If you can't get four hours uninterrupted, you may want to go to one of these exam test centers. Uh, so there's a various options there. Our, certif our um, project management essentials course, that three days course that starts this whole program, at the end of that course, I said you can go get a professional designation. It's called the Certified Project Coordinator. This one's available from the um, uh, Project Management Association of Canada. And it's designed for people either starting out their PM career, a project coordinator is like a junior PM or an assistant PM, somebody just starting out their project management career, or Sometimes we have new immigrants that are coming to Canada that have lots of PM experience and qualifications, but they're not ones that are recognized in North America. So it gives you a chance to get a, a Canadian certification to acknowledge uh, what you already have. Um, lots of jobs out there for project coordinators. If you look on the job boards, and you, you know, keep an eye out for these jobs. You'll see lots of people trying to hire project coordinators. And this is the first certification available internationally for project coordinators. Um, so to, to access it, you want to complete the project management essentials course. And the, the next one coming up from Windsor Continuing Education starts September 26th. And there's another class starting up again in April 17th, 2023. So that'll give you a chance, one in the, one in the fall or one in the spring, to complete those uh, three full days or six half days online of training. And then you can get that certification. The exam consists of two parts. The first part is a knowledge assessment, right? So you, it's a two hour exam. You got 40 multiple choice questions. Now that's a lot of time for 40 questions. They want your best answer, not your fastest answer. So they've given you lots and lots of time to think about the answer and give your best shot. Um, most people complete that first part in an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. Some people are done in as early as 40, 45 minutes. 
Some people take the full two hours, but the average is kind of around an hour, an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes to be done, uh, giving, meaning there's lots of time. Nobody's pressed for time. The second, provided you pass part one, part two, the second part of the exam is now a skills demonstration. So it's not just memorize some stuff and write a multiple choice quiz. The second part is you're given a detailed case study of a real, a real situation in the real world uh, from a project, and then you have to create um, project management deliverables using the skills that you learned in the course. You create the deliverables that would be appropriate um, for that particular uh, scenario. So you're given a list of five options, and you can choose the three that you feel most comfortable with and create them. So it could be a project schedule, could be a budget, could be a risk management plan, could be a stakeholder analysis, could be, <coughs> there's all kinds of communications strategy or communications plan. There could be all kinds of options that are in this case study, but you choose three and you create those deliverables and submit those for marking. And if you pass, you get the letters CPC, Certified Project Coordinator after your name. Now this exam costs $200 per person. I should have mentioned the PMI, PMP exam costs, I think it's $555 per person, but I can't remember if that's Canadian or US. Um, but it, so, and you apply through PMI. This one you apply through the Project Management Association of Canada. It's not done from the university. The university provides the prep course to prepare you for the exam, and then you go and schedule and write the exam at, on your own time. Um, I also mentioned the Agile certification. If you want to be a Scrum Master or a, uh, a certified Agile project manager or a certified Scrum developer, or right? there's lots of titles out there for Agile um, leaders of Agile teams, uh, this course will prepare you for it. Right? So it's a three-day course, six half-day sessions. Now, this is not part of the certificate program. It's an optional course that uh, the university offers. And as I mentioned earlier, they currently don't have one scheduled, but they're collecting an interest list. They get enough names on the list, they'll probably schedule a session. That exam is two hours and 40 multiple choice questions as well. And that one costs $150 per person. At the end of that, you get CERT APM after your name. But after that course, if you don't want to write this exam, there's also the Scrum Master Certification, which I think is 260 Canadian. There's a Scrum Developer Certification, and there's a there's another one. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but there's a, a range of certifications you could write after that course. It prepares you for all four options. OK, I've done enough talking. Uh, let's hear from you. Do you have any questions about anything that I've covered? Because I've covered a lot of material about the certificate program, about certifications in general. Um, what questions do you have? I see a hand up here, OE. Uh, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, let me just turn the, the mic on here one moment. Um, let's have a look here. Hello, Mike. Okay, did you want to ask your question in the chat yeah, or did you I want to? Question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so please could you like, okay, so after we finish this course we're taking on September 26th, are we going to write an exam afterwards? Are you referring to the Project Management Essentials course, the, that, that yeah. course? Yes. Yeah, so at the end of that course, you have the option of writing an exam that's outside of the university. You're writing an exam with the professional association to get okay. your certified project coordinator uh, credential. It's not part of the course with the university, but I'm, I'm saying the course is designed to prepare you to write that optional exam. Some people okay. want those credentials. They want those letters after their name. It's gonna help them get a job. Some people okay. aren't as interested in the certification. They just want the knowledge. Then you just write the course itself. Right. Okay, then you were talking about the PMP exam and you said, okay, once you, for you to write the exam, you have to have the requirement. So you must have the requirement before you write the PMP exam. Correct. And um, what do you mean 36? I don't understand 36 months. So what I'm trying to say is like within three years, you should be like doing further projects. Yeah, so when, if you want to get your PMP, if that's okay. your goal is to get your PMP, Okay. Then you then what you would do is you go into PMI, 
you would register, get an ID, and you would log into PMI's application system. You have to you have to show them that you've completed 35 hours of training. Okay. Right, which this program will have completed. 35 hours is, is only, uh, what is that, five days of training. You will have okay. completed that by completing the university certificate. You will have been okay. more than 35 hours, so you'd be okay. fine there. They want to see that you've pa you've got a university degree okay. or a high school diploma, depending which path you're taking. So you would upload a photo of that to their site. And then oh, the other okay. part they want you to do is show them your experience. They require a certain amount of work experience. So 36 months of work experience if you have a university degree or 60 months, five years, if you don't have a university degree, you have to detail that work experience. And specifically, what projects did you work on during that time? What was your okay. goal on that project? What project management skills did you use on that project? You need to be quite detailed because okay. what they're looking for is you've got experience using project management techniques in the real world. Okay. So that's okay. more for people who've already worked as a project manager for a while. Oh, okay. They can okay. then apply for their PMP. Okay, and the CPC is? CPC is what? almost the opposite. That's for okay. people just starting their career. You have no experience yet. This gives oh. you qualifications you can use to go get a job as a project manager and oh. start accumulating your project management experience. Oh, okay. So a yeah. lot of people get their CPC Go get a job as a as a project coordinator or a junior project manager. Start accumulating their thirty six months of experience, and then go write their PMP at a later time. Okay, okay, okay. And the agile is what? Agile is just another way of approaching projects. It's another flavor of project management, and it's used very much in the IT industry, but also it's growing in use in other industries as well. There's a lot of people, a lot of employers are looking for people with agile credentials and project management experience. So if you take that um, that course that's offered called Certified Agile Project Manager, and then you go right and pass the exam, okay. you get that you get those credentials that will, you know, are, will make you very uh, attractive in the job market for people looking for agile project managers. Okay, so basically this. Um, um, PM, the one we are right, the one we are, we are, we are teaching us is the PMI, right? In the project management essentials course, that first course, we're teaching yeah. you the fundamentals of project management across the board, not okay. tied to PMI or anybody. We're teaching you the basics of project Basic. management. Okay. So you don't have to have any knowledge of anything too, because like, I don't have any knowledge of anything. So for that first course, the Project Management Essentials, that tier one course, let me just go back to that slide so we can see what yes. I'm talking about here. Go back a few slides um, here. Just so um, everyone knows as well, this recording will be shared um, with everyone too. So if you want to reference back to anything, um, you can do so as well uh, at a later date. All right, thank you. So that first, that first box on the top of the screen, PM Essentials is what you're referring to. That yeah. fundamental course, it is, um, certification agnostic. It doesn't, it's not leaning towards PMI or Agile or another. It just teaches you the basics of project management. Okay. What we're saying is at the end of that, you can go write the CPC if you want, okay. or this is starting you on the path towards getting all the knowledge and, and you would need to write the PMP if you have work experience. Okay, so the PMI and the PMP, like I don't really understand, like is is like I know the PMP is an exam. Then what is the PMI? Is it an exam or what? So PMI is um, a, 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 a nonprofit organization that does two things. They publish standards for project management. Okay. They create standards and then they assess people against those standards. They certify them against those standards. So PMI has a, a, a range of certifications. They must have you know, 15 certifications by now. Um, wow. And and they, they're comparing people against those standards to see, do you have the, the minimum required knowledge to function in this area? So uh -huh. one of those standards they have is called the PMP. It's their most, their most popular certification. And you will go sit down, write an exam. And if you pass the exam, they will give you your, your PMP designation. Okay, so PMI is like an organization. YPMP is the exam. 
Correct. Okay. Okay. So after doing the PM extensions, you can go ahead and write the CPC exam, right? Correct. Okay. And also, um, I was like looking at this job requirement under um, a fundraiser. So basically, they said you have to have um, project management. So I'm asking after doing the five days, the you know the amongst the three um, ones left, like you know, I don't know where in particular I can focus on whether the defining and scope or project close out or the procurement and contract. Like I don't know which one. Yeah, and you might understand those better as you're going through the first eight days of this program, the PM essentials and those okay. the, the tier one and then the five days in tier two, you may have a better understanding to choose from those last three. In fact, in the PM essentials course, that first three days, there's little pieces of each of those last three courses in there, just the, the initial concepts. So you'll understand them a bit better, and that may help you choose which one you want to go with down the road. You don't have to choose at the very beginning. Okay, so basically, when we finish the PM certificate program, we write an exam which is optional. We write an exam which is optional, then we can go ahead to write the no, we can't go ahead to write the PMP exam because we have not, like, we don't have the qualification. Some people who are taking this certificate program will have the work experience, so they can go okay. write the PMP. But if okay. you're just starting out in project management, you're probably going to use your write the certified project coordinator designation and then go start accumulating project management experience. Okay, so basically, could you list out the requirement taken? The requirements for the PMP? Yeah, okay, that's this one. Here it is right here. So the 35 hours of PM training, that's the one we are going to be concluding, we are going to be starting soon. You will have more than 35 hours by the time you complete the certificate. Okay, then, um, okay, 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 okay. All right, sorry, we have a few more questions in the chat thank and we, thank, thank you so you. much. Um, we have a few more questions in the chat. I also have someone's hand up. So let's do the two in the chat first. Uh, is there a timeline of when you need to complete all nine days of training? How I see it is that nine days of training are to help get the requirements to write the PMP. Uh, can you clarify that a little bit more, Kevin? So um, the accelerated project management program, which is the nine days, uh, will that prepare you for the PMP exam prep? I'm assuming not. So it, yes and no. Um, yes, it provides the, the knowledge that you will need. It covers the topics that the exam is asking you questions on, the PMP exam. But we still highly recommend you take the PMP exam prep course uh, separately from it's not part of the certificate, but we, we, we suggest you take that separately because it teaches you how to pass the exam. The, the questions are written from a certain direction. There's some bias in them. We give you hundreds and hundreds of sample exam questions. We practice them as a group to help you prepare you to pass that exam. It's it's almost like coaching, right? To, to, to work with you. We have exam simulators that you get to try out to get, you know, so you're ready to write that exam. It is a difficult exam. So the PMP exam prep would come separately. That's a separate course from the um, certificate program. But the certificate program would give you the understanding of project management. The PMP exam prep course would give you now how do you pass the exam on those topics? Um, another question uh, as part of that is these hours of training don't technically expire. They do not. OK, uh, I need 35 hours of training in the last year. No, it's 35 hours ever. Ever. OK. Um, of, is, of project management training. Is this OK? So the next question is, is the settlement sector work experience is acceptable to meet the requirements? So PMI, if you, I assume your requirements for the PMP exam. What PMI requires is X number of months. They actually usually express it in hours, but whatever. Uh, X number of months or hours of, um, of, of work experience as uh, using project management skills. You didn't have to be the project manager. You may not even hold that title. Somebody else may have had that title. But were you defining scope? Were you identifying risks? Were you helping prepare a budget? Were you helping plan? 
you know, any hours planning would count towards this, for example. And I'm sure everybody can come up with a whole bunch of hours of doing those kinds of activities, right? You, you, you planned a vacation, you, you know, during you plan your budget for the year, you know, you're, you're tracking finances when you're paying your bills. Some, you know, if, if you saw that as a project, this vacation is a project, then the hours that go into planning and, and preparing for this vacation would probably count as a project that would count towards your hours. Working in volunteer sector counts, right? If you're doing these kinds of activities, you don't have to be paid for it. You just have to be doing this kind of work. And if you write up your profile the right way, showing that you approached it as a project, then it would count towards your hours. Great, thank you, Kevin. Um, and there was a follow-up question. Can I take these nine hours of courses now and then five years later, can I write the PMP? These hours of training don't expire. I think I think they mean the, the days of training, the nine days in the certificate. Yes, there is no nine expiry. PM, PMI doesn't require the training to have happened recently. As long as you have some proof that you took the course, which uh, your transcript or a completion certificate or something like that would suffice. Um, then you get the you get the credit for it. OK, thank you, Kevin. Um, Hamida, I'm going to um, Hamida had uh, their hand up, so I'm going to allow the mic. Uh, let's have a look here. Hamida, do you, are you there? Did you uh, still have a question for us? Um, you'll have to unmute your mic on your end. And while uh, Hamida is Hi. oh. OK, there we go. Hi, hi Kevin, you, you touched upon something. I just want clarification on two things, OK? The 36 months would apply even if you have a master's or would that be dropping to 24 or no? That doesn't change. No, unfortunately, they don't distinguish between po they don't distinguish between okay. levels of university degree. It's still 36 months. And for the 35 hours of training, I, I, I think it I, I just got confused. So if I took the three days, say in full, OK, do yep. I, before that would I get the three days, we count seven hours per day. So that three day project management essentials course would give you 21 hours. So you're still missing some more hours to hit the 35. So but if you then, complete the whole certificate program, which is nine days, you would have way more. You'd have almost double of the number of hours that you need. To, to write the PMP exam. So you would be more than qualified. You have more than met the requirement. OK, uh, and my last question, the three years experience leading projects, it doesn't matter what industry, right? Like I've been in healthcare 25 years and that's all I know. So if you worked in healthcare, you're going to have projects where you were um, renovating, moving floors, uh, upgrading equipment, uh, anything like that. Anything that's a change and you were participating in that change, that would count towards this. So if it happens, let's say, OK, you, you mentioned a very interesting example. Uh, there's always every five years in this industry, we would upgrade to new equipment, OK? Mm -hmm. And there would be so much work that goes into it to make sure it performs equal or better, right? So that happens in gaps, right? Let's say that we put the RFP, the request for proposal and a bunch of other things, right? And plan for uh, asking for money from the government yep. to purchase large amounts of equipment. So it happens, let's say some of it happens over five years. Would that be sufficient as one project or that wouldn't count as one project? I would need more. You could count that as one project. Now you're, you, but you're only counting the, the, the part of that project where you were doing estimating, planning, um, you know, scheduling, assessing risk, um, building a business case, dealing with stakeholders and analyzing stakeholders. Like you would count that. If that was the majority of your time, then you would count that uh, uh, that whole time. If you just worked for two or three months of that five-year project doing those things, then you would just count those two or three months of the five-year project. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another question is, we did the engineering project management. Uh, will that cover the 35 hours of PM training? Um, so is that a course within the University of Windsor? Um, that would be my question. Um, but if, if it was a university course, Kevin, 
uh, would that cover 35 hours of PM training or would if, that if, count if as the that? Court, if the course had 35 hours, if it was, a, if it, was an, uh, it sounds like it's a project management course. If the course had at least 35 hours of, of class time, then yeah, that would count. You've, then you've met already the 35 hours. Um, I still would recommend you write the PMP exam prep course though, to know about the exam, the bias on the exam, the kinds of questions they ask, practice writing some questions, getting tips on how to pass the exam. Uh, that course would be still very recommended. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, okay, so after this question, I'm going to go to um, the the hand raising. Uh, so, can we take the training after graduating from university? Yes, you can take it concurrent with university or right after graduating. That's fine too. Um, with one of our other universities that we provide similar training through. Um, some of their students have graduated already having the certified project coordinator or the certified agile project manager designations. And that was the reason they got a job right out of school because it made their resume stand out. So yeah, we recommend whether even if you're still an undergrad, you can still start this program on the side if you wish and graduate with credentials. If you have graduated already, you're welcome to sign right up. There another question. There was a couple hands raised. Yes, the optional exam is what after we take this accelerated certificate. What's the name? So let me go back to this picture here. <clears throat> after the first box at the top of the screen, after the project management essentials course, okay. the three day course, you could, if you wish, outside of the university, register and write the certified project coordinator exam and get CPC after your name if you pass the exam. That's just after the first box, after the first three days. Okay. The course itself does not have a, a, an exam. Okay. Right? There's a separate exam. If you wish to go write it, you can. Each of the five days in the center block, level two or phase two, each of those five, there's no exam tied to those courses. Okay. Right? Some of them have sample quizzes and stuff just for fun so you can sort of see okay. how you're collecting the, the knowledge but because this is a continuing education program that you know you're basically marked on a pass fail rather than um, a, a numerical mark uh, and the same thing with the last tier so there is no formal exam that's built okay. into the certificate however there are external exams you could go apply and write like the okay. certified project coordinator like the certified agile project manager, like the P, uh, you know uh, uh, PMP course, uh, PMP exam, you could go write those exams if you wish, but you don't pay the university; you pay those examination um, organizations. Okay. So let me. How do we? Oh, like is that like a part of or? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It broke up very badly. Can you repeat yeah, the question? Yeah, um, I asked if you finish this accelerated PM certificate program, when you are done, you just get your certificate, right? Or you have to pass, or oh, I don't understand, like. At the end of this nine days, you would get a certificate from the university. You get the accelerated project management program certificate from the university. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, do you have any advisors that we could consult to recognize work experience from settlement sector in order to meet the requirement to apply for the PMP certificate and exam? Um, I, 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 yeah, the answer is yes, but we charge for that service. and I don't want to make this a sales, a sales pitch. Um, most of our um, in in Windsor, there is an organization called PMI Southwest Ontario Chapter. PMI SWAC, Southwest Ontario Chapter. Um, they have, it's, a, it's, an, a, it's a, a, a small branch of PMI in, uh, in Southwest Ontario. They're headquartered kind of in London, but they have 
um, they have meetings every once in a while in different places. I know there's some in Sarnia occasionally. Um, there's some, there, occasionally there's a meeting in Windsor. Most of the meetings are in London. But the, if you contact that association, they have many members who will act as coaches or advisors for people wanting to uh, write the PMP exam. And most of them provide that service for free on a volunteer basis because they get, um, I guess, like credit. They get points for it. And they need 60 points every couple of years, to, every three years to maintain their status in the organization. So they're encouraged to volunteer to help out uh, people with these things. So I would contact the PMI Southwest Ontario chapter and they would provide people for you probably for free that could uh, give you advice on mapping your, your experience to the requirements from PMI. Um, thank you. Uh, for the CPC exam, which provider should we contact? The Project Management Association of Canada. And the uh, URL for that is pmac-agpc, the French version, dot ca. Okay, I just, I'm going to type that in the chat as well. Um, and under, under there, you just look under specialty certifications, you'll see the CPC and all the information, online application form, everything's there. Awesome, thanks, Kevin. Um, so I guess one thing that we get asked a lot in continuing education is uh, what is the time commitment outside of class um, <laughs> that would be required uh, to complete successfully? Great, okay. great question. We have specifically designed these continuing education programs, assuming everybody has uh, a full time day job and a life. <laughs> they probably have kids or family or other commitments as well. So we design these courses where almost everything is included within the class time itself, that we're not expecting you to do homework or readings or anything like that outside of class time. The, there is an exception to that, not the, the accelerated PM certificate program. As far as I can tell, just looking at it, there should be no homework in any of those classes, right? You may, you may want to read ahead. You may want to review your notes if you want. That's up to you. But we give you enough time in class to complete all the work. If you are doing the um, PMP exam prep course, there is extra reading and there is that's outside of the certificate program. It's one of those extra courses, right? The PMP exam prep and certified agile PM that PMP exam prep has extra readings. You have there's a standard that they're testing you against and you have to buy a copy of that standard and read it. And uh, it's it's thick. There's lots of reading. So we expect you to read it and study that. But we give you study tools in the course, flashcards and things like that. So a lot of people spend a lot of time uh, preparing for that exam, even after taking an exam prep course. I know I spent 200 hours uh, studying for the exam when I wrote it back in the 90s, um, and I, but I was overprepared. I, it, it, I studied too much. Uh, but the exam's changed a lot since then, and different people have different levels of prior experience and knowledge, so it depends for you what's the right number for you. Uh, but we give you some advice in that PMP exam prep course, and we also provide study clinics outside of class where you can, uh, there, there are conference calls where you can dial in and ask questions of an instructor and, and play with the, you know, ask why you got a sample exam question wrong and try and figure out what the mistake was and things like that. Okay, great. Um, okay, so I'm going to allow Mike for the person with their hand raised. Go ahead. Um, I'm so sorry. How do we pronounce your name? And you're on mute. Onyi. Onyi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and ask your okay. question. Okay. So, sir, you just finished explaining the PMP exam prep. You were you were saying something about is it the school that is going to be doing all that? Like um, what you just finished saying, the consultation. I don't understand and what you can do outside of school. Is it the University of Windsor that is going to be helping students out, like, you know, in case of, or we go outside of the school to learn that? So it's the university, so the, so the PMP exam prep is also a course offered through Windsor Continuing Education. It's not part of the PM, accelerated PM certificate program. Okay. 
it's an extra course that's in addition to the certificate program. So oh. you can just take that course by itself or you can take the certificate program and then take the PMP exam prep. It's just another option for you. Um, if you wish to get your PMP exam, they offer that course. When you sign up for that course, currently mm -hmm. we're still doing them online because we're still kind of in the tail end of COVID, hopefully. Knock on wood, <laughs> it'll be over soon. Um, mm -hmm. So when you sign up for that course, it'll be these online sessions and um, you will be given chances to uh, it'll practice exams and sample questions. We'll walk through each of the major areas of the exam, what topics you're going to be asked and what what kinds of questions you're going to be asked, and you'll be walking through that. There will also be provided some teleconference coaching sessions where people can call in who are taking the, this exam prep course and ask questions of an expert who can explain uh, the answer or why you got the question wrong or something like that. Okay. And also, you Ani, you're breaking up again. We couldn't catch that question. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think we sounds like a bandwidth issue. Maybe on you, maybe you can type the question in the chat window. That may help. Can you hear me now? It's called CMI SWAC. CMI SWAC, CMI Southwest Ontario chapter. Yeah, what was that? What's it all about? That's PMI is the organization that provides the exam. Okay. The PMP exam. Okay. That's just a branch of the organization located near University of Windsor. Yeah, what does he do? Um, they have meetings, they have guest speakers, you know, uh, over dinner, um, and they provide a means for their members to, they get, provide help for their members to get certified. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so if you contact them, they may help you, uh, uh, you know, compare your experience to what's needed for the exam and help you see if you have the third, you know, the, the 36 months. OK, thank you. Thank you. A um, couple more questions in the chat. Uh, would you mind talking about what industries would require project manager or co coordinator? And I think another question that kind of goes along with that is like, um, Aside from like being a, you know, having a job title as project manager, what other titles are associated with project management in terms of job titles and uh, what industries would require project management? Wow, that's a that's a that's a big question. So <laughs> pretty much every industry has project managers, almost every industry. Um, they have different titles. So project manager is sort of the generic one, project director, project executive, um, right? Those are, those are project management titles. You may see project coordinators as a junior project manager. Sometimes they have names associate project manager or project coordinator. Uh, these tend to be people who are, project coordinators tend to be people who are new, newer in the profession curve. They haven't moved as high up the career path yet. So they're just starting out as project managers. In the entertainment industry right they may be you may have titles like stage manager right um as as a as a project management title or uh producer right producer is a project manager in the in the movie industry for example in construction you're going to see site supervisors right who are there on site coordinating the work of all the trades on a, on a building site so they're in all kinds of different industries they may have different titles you may have um, change lead or change manager as a project management title in some organizations where you're looking at org organizational transformations or reorgs or um, major process and policy changes in an organization. Project management, remember, is a, is a role as much as it is a title. And anybody can take on that role. You might be a vice president and you might be working partially as a project manager on a large initiative. Some, you know, a, 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 an administrative clerk, their job title might be administrative clerk, but they're managing a small project. There's a, you know, there's gonna be a, an employee um, uh, engagement day and they're gonna have a big barbecue out in the parking lot and the president of the company is gonna come out and make a speech and hand out some prizes. And, and, and this administrative, person is is charged with organizing that event right getting the caterer organized 
getting this, you know, the cleaning staff organized to clean up afterwards, et cetera. That would be a project management role that they don't have the project man job title, but they're going to be, you know, ha taking on that role. Fundraisers for, a, you know, for your school, for your kid's school, managing, coordinating a fundraiser or a school picnic. Uh, you know, managing a renovation of your kitchen. You got a new kitchen coming in. You're coordinating the work of, you know, the plumber and the electrician and the and the carpenter. That would be a project management role. Whether you carry the title or not, you're doing the work of a project manager. So the role exists in every industry, um, and it's very commonly used. Uh, the title project manager is very well known across multiple industries. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question, besides budget planning and executing, how much math is involved in the exams? In the um, CPC exam, I don't think there's any. In the Certified Agile PM exam, I don't believe there is any. But in the PMP exam, there is some math. It's not any more complicated than division or multiplication. But there are a couple formulas that are used on the PMP exam for something called earned value management. So there's a series of formulas. I think there's like four or six formulas you have to memorize. And there will be, but it's it's multiplication and division is as complicated as it gets. There's no weird calculus or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> I've been a project manager for many years, a uh, very successful project manager on projects up to you know hundreds of millions of dollars. And, you know, other than simple, simple math, mostly addition, some multiplication, the odd division, that's all I've ever had to use. <laughs> okay, thank you, phew. <laughs> okay, um, work experience. Is work experience from USA accepted in Canada? Yes. Great, awesome. In, fa in fact, work experience from around the world is accepted by PMI. Um, the the chat that for the PMP exam work experience from anywhere in the world will apply. The challenge with employment in Canada is different, right? So if you're an immigrant to Canada, unfortunately, Canadian employers don't always recognize foreign work experience um, for two reasons. One, sometimes it's hard to verify whether that work experience is valid, whether you're lying or not on your resume because they can't easily contact the foreign employer to, to verify um, different time zones, maybe different language barriers, um, or they don't even, they've never heard of the organization or company before, so they're not sure if it's legitimate. That's the main reason why foreign work experience isn't valued in can by Canadian employers that well. Um, but PMI is an international organization. They're in uh, 100 different countries, I think now. Um, they will accept work experience from anywhere in the world. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I'm going to take a little break and share uh, my screen. I just wanted to share some upcoming dates with everyone, um, just so you have an idea of when our next offering is um, for these. So I'm going to share here. OK, so level one of project management essentials uh, it will take place Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So again, Kevin, I mentioned six uh, half days, so it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays for two weeks from September 26th to October 5th, um, 8.30 a.m. to 12. And then the PMP exam prep, October 5th to November 5th, uh, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And then Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 1.30 or 1.30 p.m. Uh, full schedules and costs you can find at continue.uwindsor.ca. Um, any questions at all, you can email us. We're very responsive to our email as well. So continue at uwindsor.ca. Even um, after this presentation, if you think of anything um, project management related or program related, please email us there uh, and we will get the answer to you as accurately and as quickly as possible. And then lastly, I wanted to show, um, uh, tell you about our Canada Ontario's job grant and OSAP micro credentials application. So the project management courses are eligible for both. So if you have an employer that would want to send you, or if you are an employer that want to send some of your teammates, you can um, consider the Canada Ontario jobs grant application. And this will um, offset, help offset some of the costs um, to be able to bring, uh, 
send you into the program. As well, if you are an individual who is registering for the course, um, there is an opportunity to apply for the OSAP micro-credential application. Uh, the 2022-23 application is not out yet. However, this, this program is eligible and it will be available once the course takes place. Okay, uh, any, okay, so we've got another question. I've been working for 10 years back in my country. Will my experience be counted? Absolutely. If you, if it's project management related experience, as I said, if you're doing estimating or planning or things like that, that would count. All right, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? If not, we can um, close it here again. I will type our email in the chat um, so that you have it. In Anya case you think of her, anything else. Anya oh. put her hand up again. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let me just uh, unmute. Allow Mike. Okay, go ahead, Anya. All right. The Ontario Job Grant is for those looking for a job when they are finished the project management um, um, exam prep course, right? So the uh, Canada Ontario Jobs Grant is if you is for employers to fill out as an application if they want to send their employees into the program, and it would be eligible within the uh, Accelerator Project Management Program. Oh, okay. So okay, okay. So I didn't yep. need it. Thank yeah, you. No I, I have uh, Sue with your permission. Um, there is also options if you don't have a job, but you're looking for work. There are um, micro lending uh, institutions in Canada that are specifically set up to help uh, new immigrants improve their job prospects. So help you get skills It's part of the immigration settlement funding from the federal government. Um, so there are some organizations that are administering some of that federal government money. So if you need a loan to help pay for your certificate program to help you get a job, um, that there's options there available as well. And uh, I can provide that information through Sue. If you're interested, you just contact her and I can make sure she gets that information. And so if go ahead and email us at continue at eWindsor.ca and I can forward you um, any relevant information that you may require. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Anybody else? All right. It looks like we are good. So um, thank you, Kevin, again. Oh, uh, Ani is typing something here. One second. Oh, thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I will be sharing this recording with everyone uh, within the next day or so. Have a great day, and um, yeah, have a great Monday and rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.